Okay, uh, my name is Luther Sowers. I was born in the Westside Sanitarium on October the 13th, 1925, the 150th anniversary of the establishment of the United States Navy. Uh, my mother and father were both Yorkers, both of whom attended public school actually at Ridge Avenue, and both of whom ended their public school education at eighth grade. Uh, when I, after I was born, uh, my father and mother had built a house in what was the Long Street Tract, which is now Old East York, and that was laid out in 1903. <clears throat> it was there that I grew up, and it is there where I live today. Uh, I, uh, my time as a kid uh, was spent, I guess you'd say, as part of the greatest generation. I grew up during the Depression, and my father was killed in an automobile accident in 1932, and my mother and my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, and a cousin of my father's, the three, who was a teacher in the city of York, incidentally. The three of those ladies, I suppose, are responsible for rearing me and my older brother, who was killed uh, by the Japanese when his ship was bombed on the 1st of March of 1942. That ship sunk in the Indian Ocean, and uh, he was one of those that didn't survive. Uh, I myself then was really an only child from that time forward. Uh, however, I was at that time, I was 16 years old, and I couldn't wait till I was 17 so I could enlist in the United States Navy, which my father had also served in World War I. Uh, and I did enter the Navy in uh, July of 1943, uh, and I served on two different ships and was discharged in January of 1946. Uh, in the fall of 1946, I uh, entered Westchester State Teachers College, and I graduated in August of 1949, and the following month began teaching in the school district of the city of York. I over a period of 10 years, uh, I taught English and social studies to junior high school age children at Phineas Davis Junior High School. Uh, after the 10th year, I took a sabbatical leave and was, and was being educated at the University of Pennsylvania from which I eventually received a doctorate in 1965. Uh, my year, my 11th year in education, of course, was after I spent a year in Philadelphia at the University of Pennsylvania and worked down there in the service bureau. And I was able uh, to make ends meet, even though Ruth and I had three children and she was not employed at the time. So we reared three daughters, regardless. Uh, when I came back, I taught English to seventh graders uh, for one year. And uh, then the next year, Dr. John Albaum, who was the superintendent of schools, decided it was time to get me out of the classroom, so he made me a guidance counselor at Phineas Davis for a year. And then following that, so I, I should 
put it this way, in 59, 60, I was on sabbatical leave. In 60, 61, I was teaching English. In 61, 62, I was a guidance counselor. And then 62, three and four, I was an administrative assistant uh, at Phineas Davis. And in the fall of, uh, in September, I should say, having having completed my studies at Penn uh, in May of 1965, that following fall, I went to the administration building and was in charge of federal programs. I eventually became the assistant superintendent of schools in New York City. And after uh, six years, when the current superintendent uh, was not reappointed, I assumed I was going to be, but such turned out not to be the case. So I left and became the superintendent of the Southeastern School District. I served there for 13 years and retired in 1987. And since that time, I've been uh, more of a volunteer, I guess, than anything else. And I, uh, I don't volunteer as much around the house as I do elsewhere. <laughs> but at any rate, what I do, I do uh, in the community. And uh, I really uh, I could say that uh, my, my current involvement uh, includes a number of things. And I have them written down, and I think that's, it's easier for me to read those than it is for me to try to fumble through my calendar to see what's next. Um, all nonprofits, uh, Foresight Vision, the YMCA, the Ark of York County, the York County Chapter American Red Cross, the Advisory Board of the York County Juvenile Court, the 19th District Internship Association, the York County Academy Board of Trustees, Westchester University Alumni Association, the York County Parks Foundation Charitable Trust Incorporated, York County Heritage Trust, Memorial Hospital, Springsbury Township Historic Preservation Committee, the Bill Goodling Teacher Scholarship Fund, York Arts, the York County Literacy Council, Martin Library and the Cultural Alliance. And I think there's some more, but that, those I do have down in, in print. And at any rate, those are things I have done or am doing. I, I'm not involved with all of them at the present time. Um, I would say that that's probably my major thing. I used to have a garden. Uh, I don't have a garden anymore. And one of my problems is my balance. And when I, when I lean over to plant onions, I might fall over into the lettuce patch. So I don't, I don't garden anymore. Okay. And some, uh, about four years ago, my wife made me quit mowing the grass because I have a bank that I used to mow and she was afraid I'd slip and wind up losing a hand or something. So I don't do much, as I say, around the house. I do wash windows. <laughs> okay. Other than that, I don't do a whole lot of things. I still read and uh, I visit friends when they're not well. Uh, some of them are well that I visit, but I'm, I'm a believer in, in trying to help my fellow man. So that's exactly the kind of thing I do. Uh, I am involved, as, as you heard, uh, with things that include the city of York, and I'm still a believer in the, in the city, and especially the city schools. And I always have hope that uh, a school board and a superintendent in the city will get that thing back to where it used to be. Uh, whether that will ever happen, I don't know. Kids are not the same as they used to be. Uh, I can remember when I taught school, we were allowed to discipline youngsters, uh, even as much as with paddles, when things didn't get on uh, uh, work out very well. 
a young man who's not so young anymore is retired. It was a detective in the city of York by the name of Dennis Smith. One time was asked if uh, you had him in school, what did he teach you? And he said, how to duck. <laughs> so, so it shows that I was quick with my hands and, and when kids didn't move the way I thought they should, why well, I helped them. Uh, that was the kind of discipline that was carried on in homes also. Now the kinds of discipline is always that kind which seems to hurt children, not, not uh, startle them to the point that they know they did something wrong, but uh, discipline today seems to be that you slam the youngster into the ground or you uh, beat him so badly that he, he can't breathe. And, and how many times do we see in the paper uh, where somebody is in court because of the fact they killed a child? It just, it just doesn't make sense uh, for an adult who is, say, 25 years old to hammer a youngster who's 25 months old. It, 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 well, I can't, I just can't believe it, but that's the way people are. And I think because of that kind of attitude, uh, of these people that do these things are emotionally uh, upset most of the time. And what helps to do that is the fact that they are either on booze or on drugs or on some kind of, of uh, shall I say, uh, introverted help. It, it, it's, uh, well, it's something that I just don't see how people who are adults can constantly do things like that. Uh, the idea of cocktails at, at dinner and so forth is, is something that I think can be controlled and people know how to do it, they do it well. But people who, who don't know how to handle alcohol, who don't know how to handle uh, even aspirin for that matter, uh, are individuals that, that cause uh, upheaval. Uh, whenever you whenever you see something like what has happened recently in Baltimore, uh, you can bet that it really isn't because of the fact that somebody was killed by police. It's because of the fact that it's an excuse to enter, a, for example, a drugstore, as was done with CVS in Baltimore, and steal everything that's inside. Now, you can't tell me that that's why they, the, the reason they did that was because of, of the, the fact that, that that young man was killed by the police or at least was mistreated to the point where he died because of their activity. And it wasn't necessarily racist since there are six individuals that have been indicted for that, three of whom were the same race as the guy who died. Uh, you, you know, you, you just wonder what these people think about when except their own self-aggrandizement and they enter a place like that, that drugstore, and then finally light a fire to it, you know. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, well, and, and things, uh, I, uh, you, you don't turn on the news anymore that there's not a shooting, there isn't a fire, there isn't a murder, you know. It, it, shootings aren't all murders. They're just somebody got shot, that's all, because of a drive-by uh, situation. I, <clears throat> my feeling and all sincerity is that police should be trained very thoroughly not to kill, but to make sure that self-defense is their main purpose and that they arrest people for doing things that are not right, that are that are unlawful. Let's put it that way. Uh, by the same token, I feel that individuals who are ne necessarily have any uh, legal status, but just plain citizens, must in some way continue the democratic process and do 
as our forefathers taught us to do. The Constitution was established for the benefit of everyone, not just one race, not just one economic uh, status. Uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's literally a, a shame that we can't get along with each other. And that's what it is. Neighbors used to do things together. Now, neighbors look next door to see what's wrong. And uh, I, I don't know if there's anything else that I can do as a volunteer, but I at least attempt to uh, uh, keep things going the way they should go. And New York County Parks and Martin Library and places like that the Historical Society, all of those kinds of things are the kinds of things that enable mankind to progress, not to just try to find something to do that will disturb uh, the status of the democracy. And I'm, uh, I, I really, uh, I'm sure I don't have all the answers, uh, but in my time uh, of leadership, I tried to do that which would be beneficial, not only to the students and their parents, but to the community as a whole. And that was my belief. And I feel that public education is that important because of the fact that that's where we get our, uh, where we learn to do what's, uh, what's worthwhile and, and helpful to others. I don't think that I can say a whole lot more. I, 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 do, I do feel bad sometimes because of what's occurring. If, if you were to talk about what has led us to this and what you would recommend for anybody that's watching this, how they can make a change in their community, how they can divert or avert the drug epidemic and, and what you feel is driving it and, and where where can we find the common ground at on this? I Our kids are our future and if they're falling off the cliff means we're falling off the cliff. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you were to pick out one single thing that you think is driving all these kids to drugs not everything, but the single biggest dynamic. Well, I think the single biggest thing is that their home life is not based on morality of any sort. And I think that then, of course, those who are tempted, in, uh, it's just like uh, when, when I was a kid, I can remember uh, another bunch of kids that used to sit on a rail fence uh, on a, by a meadow in East York and smoke cigarettes. And the cigarettes that they smoked, they either stole from their parents or stole from a store or something. Mm -hmm. and, and don't get me wrong, the fact remains that they knew what they were doing was wrong. I think in today's society, kids, kids don't learn that those things are wrong. They just do them and what, find out that they're wrong by being arrested or by being uh, involved in some shooting or some fire or something like that. Or maybe it's brain damage or the diseases that catch along the way well, too. Yeah, well, that's, I guess that's possible. Yeah. But I don't, th I, I'm not being a, a, a physician, I don't understand that part of it. Mm -hmm. but what I do understand is what kids think about. And doggone, uh, like, Cal Ripken and his baseball business. He's got kids that that seem to stay uh, involved with baseball all year through as a unit, so that they they operate uh, uh, on a well, on a morality level, mm -hmm. and, and it's because of the fact that that's the way he feels about things. But but he has organized them, and I think the answer is that teachers not only set an example, and just last night on the news about that uh, woman teacher who, who had 
taught kids to drink uh, alcoholic beverages. So what the Sam Hill? You wonder why she would want kids to do that. Can't she find her associates at her age to, to, to drink with? It, it just, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not talking against drink. Uh, I, I don't at this stage of my life uh, uh, drink alcohol, uh, but my wife still has a glass of wine before dinner. And I certainly don't un, uh, see anything wrong with it. But the whole point, and, and I have uh, one daughter who never touches any alcohol at all, but I have two daughters that do. And they all seem to be on the same level of, of, of moral interpretude at any rate. Mm -hmm. and, and that comes from setting an example, which my wife and I have tried to do for a total of 65 years as of December of this year. And, uh, you know, uh, I tried to do the same thing. I tried to set an example for kids in school. I might have worked a couple of kids over, but those that watched knew very well there was a reason for it. Mm -hmm. So uh, that my, I, I don't know uh, of any better place than the church to teach youngsters uh, how to operate. But the place that isn't a church is a school. And if the parents support the schools, the schools will make a difference. But unfortunately, in some of these big cities, and even the city the size of York, uh, the, the parents really don't care what their kids do as long as they get out of the house and go. Mm -hmm. And if they don't go to school, that doesn't bother them until the truant officer comes around and raises cane with them. Mm -hmm. Or they, they have a fine for uh, having a youngster that that uh, has uh, not uh, uh, attended school regularly and and done what he should have done, Are these uh, well is the moral decline solely limited to urban areas because we have I mean the growth recently in in heroin and other drugs has been a surge in suburbia and rural areas. Mm -hmm. Is it conceivable? And I have trouble in my own mind. Is it conceivable in your mind that a parent or parents who are raising a kid can possibly have that kid turn to drugs if there's that moral compass within the family? I, I guess it can, depending on the associations they have. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother uh, used to tell me uh, about those with whom I associated uh, that... Uh, I ought to know better than to be involved with so-and-so because of the fact that if you remember something like he had, he did this or did that and was, was uh, uh, either arrested or was uh, dragged into some kind of, of alderman's court at that time, mm -hmm. which there used to be one in the 12th Ward that I remember very well. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, my mother, uh, I, I don't think my mother ever raised a hand against me. I said my father was killed when I was six. Mm -hmm. And so she had to rear my brother and me uh, with the help of her mother and, uh, I say, uh, a second cousin of sure. ours. Well, <laughs> the point being that she made us feel so ashamed of what we did that she didn't need to hit us, you know. Mm -hmm. Really, uh, I can remember. I can remember Mr. Zimmerman and Phineas Davis. He didn't often use a paddle, but he certainly did make a lot of kids feel bad about what they had done. I, he just had seemed to have that Sunday school operation that he used. Mm -hmm. uh, I I tried to, the same thing, and I think I accomplished it to a certain degree, but not near so well as he. And the principal at Edgar Fawd Smith, who was J. Alvin Herzog, another man that just seemed to be able to get kids to understand what they did wrong and that the, the consequences were the punishment that was administered. And that's what counts. And, and of course, today, as you're seeing, we, we don't even have that moral compass with teachers in a lot of right, situations. Right. Uh, so we can't have teachers who have no moral compass to discipline kids 
when it's lacking in themselves. Yeah. And we, we reach this, like Camus' treadmill, where, where, and it all goes back to parenting, and that's what I see it. Um, it can't possibly be, can it, that this r astonishing growth of heroin addiction and all drug addiction throughout suburban and rural areas is simply obliterated to parents that don't have a clue what their kids are doing. This that's, that's probably they don't have a clue, and that's because they don't care where they go or what they do. The whole point is that if they knew what their children were doing, and my mother, I can remember my mother telling me, of course, this is when I was pretty much of a kid, mm -hmm. telling me that nothing good happens with you after 10 o'clock at night. So if you aren't here, I know there's something wrong. And again, made me feel very much ashamed that I didn't want to tell what I was doing. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that, you know, that's the whole, the whole thing in a nutshell, that, that, that parental and, and by the same token, teachers and, and administrators for that matter, they can't tell, you know, if the teacher says, well, I can't do anything about that, I'm not allowed to hit the youngsters. You don't need to hit them. You need to make sure that they understand that what is going on is wrong, and you're, as a teacher, aren't going to put up with it. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, uh, that, that doesn't, and again, I go back, you've got to set an example yourself. If they look up to you, they're going to do things. I, I can remember a guy, a teacher I had as a seventh grade teacher. His name was Dan Hirsch. And Dan Hirsch, well, I, he, he just did everything that I thought was just right for a teacher, you know. He, he would uh, put things on the blackboard and say, now there it is. If there are questions, I'm here. And he'd be up and down the aisles doing that kind of thing. He didn't sit down at the desk and say, go to work, you know. That, that's, that's what the parents do. They, they go to bed and say, make sure that you do what's right and then go to bed and don't pay. They don't follow up. You, you've got to be, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, you, you've got to know as a parent what the youngster does and make sure that they don't do it again. And mm -hmm. uh, how do you do this? I don't know, but I, I got away with it. With the, My kids are all in their late 50s or 60s. <laughs> One's in the late 50s. But, you know, it just, uh, well, it just doesn't make sense that, that people don't want their children to do what's right. And, and I think that it's not that they don't want them to do what's right, it's that they don't care whether they do it or not. Mm. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I get a little upset with those kinds of parents. Is there a difference between, let's say, York City and what happens with those kids? Because you have a strong relationship there versus what goes on in the suburban school districts, or is it the same? Are the dynamics the, the same? The, the, the children have the same temptations in both instances, and the teachers have the same uh, preparation to teach in both of the places. What happens is, in some instances, and I say this for administrators as well as teachers, a teacher will say, well, the principal doesn't back me. Well, that's not necessarily the case if higher-ups, including school board members, make sure that their administrators do back teachers. And I, I well, I can give an example uh, of of, of a principal who told a teacher that what they have to do is such and such. And the teacher said, and if I don't, then what? And he said, then you'll have to report to the superintendent of schools. Not to me, to the superintendent, if they don't do what's right. There's a, a, a school principal is responsible for his teachers. 
And I don't know that I ever knew any principals, uh, maybe one or two in New York City, that, that didn't do that way. And I see the same thing about some of the principals in suburban. I, I, don't, I don't know a principal in suburban right now who doesn't do his job properly. But I do know of some that didn't. And my, my oldest daughter was involved with a school where there was such a person. 